What up, everybody? RJ here, Road to Liberty. I want to do a video today talking about the um, Catch-22 of diversity. All right? It's actually, you know what Catch-22 is, right? Catch-22 is when you can't, like, here's a Catch-22. You need a car to get a job, but you can't get a car if you don't have a job. Like, no one's going to prove you for a car loan, or you can't afford a car for cash because you haven't had a job, and you haven't saved up any money because you haven't had a job. But you need a car to get a job. That's a Catch-22. Diversity has a Catch-22. And it's playing out in the world right now. Check it out. So, basically, you know how there's like the Syrian, uh, you know, uh, I guess you could say exodus or whatever, uh, migration? Well, that's an example. That's a microcosm. But if we took all of the borders away, which voluntarists and libertarians such as myself are generally for, and there was no more welfare which voluntarists and libertarians are generally for, including myself, then theoretically speaking, there'd be a lot less disincentives for any individual or family to prevent them from moving or, you know, so reasons to, to prevent them from, from migrating. So if you lived in the South and you wished to live in a cooler climate, you could move North and uh, out of, out of, outside of borders, you know, that used to be there, national borders. So, um, what happens is because you have more diversity in a given area, so you can be like, okay, well, this town in North Dakota is highly diverse. There's a lot of different nationalities that live here, let's say. Um, but then, slowly but surely, over generations and generations, it would be understandable to imagine how cultures could erode, whereas if you had something like a Germany or an Ireland or um, a France with a very distinct culture, or you know, uh, Japan. And before any of these cultures were westernized in the, in, the, in the 19th and 20th centuries, they had a largely, very geographically unique culture, philosophy, ideology, without getting into a valuative judgment, um, you know, a, a normative judgment on whether or not um, actual blending of cultures is good or not. I just want to point out the Catch-22 itself of the fact that if you have more diversity in a given area, the whole world loses diversity because there's like this micro and um, macro dichotomy, um, micro being small, macro meaning large. So on the macro large scale, you have these world cultures dissipating and colliding and, you know, blending together. Um, and on the microcosm, you have more cultural diversity in a given area, but Fast forward three, four, five hundred years. Will there be people that speak all these different languages, or will we have? You know, um, I'll end this video with you guys having a little homework to do if you want. Search um, on Google for world language and um, people in favor of a world language or advocates for a world language, and you'll see there's actually a pretty strong push right now taking place. And I'll do another separate video on this, but there's a strong push actually in place right now to start to. On, on some fronts anyway, some people in power or with authority um, would like to see less cultural diversity on a large scale and more cultural diversity on a small scale. So I'd like to hear your guys' thoughts about this. Do you see the same Catch-22 taking place here or do you think it's a more clear, open, shut sort of situation? Let me know what you think and uh, leave your comments below. Like and subscribe and uh, holler back, y'all. Peace.